In this video, I'm going to show how you can compute the Taylor expansion of any function and do so step by step. In particular, we're asked to calculate the Taylor expansion of the square root of 1 plus x. As a recap, the procedure gives us an alternative way to write the function when x is very small. The general form of the Taylor expansion is the following. In essence, it represents a polynomial, or a sum of terms with increasing power of x, and the coefficient, the number in front of every term, is proportional to various derivatives of our original function, filled in in x is equal to 0. The superscript, and between brackets on the function, denotes the nth derivative of this function. If this confuses you, don't worry, it will become clear by actually computing each term for our example. The series starts at n is equal to 0, and thus this will be the first term in our expansion. We simply take the general form and plug in n is equal to 0. In the numerator, we have f with superscript 0. Now this is the 0th derivative, which is simply the function itself. Then we still need to fill in x is equal to 0 in this function. In the denominator, we have 0 factorial, which is 1. And we shouldn't forget to multiply this fraction with x to the power of 0, which is also simply 1. Filling in x is equal to 0 in the numerator yields our first term, simply 1. And this is called the 0th order Taylor expansion of our particular function. Next up is our second term, for which n is equal to 1. Again, we start from the general formula and fill in n is equal to 1. This time we have f superscript 1 in the numerator. This is shorthand notation for the first derivative. We can easily calculate the derivative of the square root of 1 plus x. This is 1 half multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of minus 1 half. The denominator is 1 factorial and we multiply the fraction with x to the power of 1, which is x. After filling in x is equal to 0 in the numerator, we are left with simply 1 half. Thus, the second term in our Taylor expansion becomes x over 2. We continue with n is equal to 2, our third term. By now we know how it goes. We take the general form and fill in n is equal to 2. This time we have to take the second derivative of our function, which in our case is minus 1 over 4 times 1 plus x to the power of minus 3 halves. In the denominator we get 2 factorial and we multiply with x to the power of 2. Filling in x is equal to 0 in the numerator, we are left with minus x to the power of 2 over 8. To end off, we compute the fourth term, with n is equal to 3. The pattern should be clear. The most difficult part is calculating the ever-increasing derivatives of our function. The third derivative of the square root of 1 plus x is 3 over 8 times 1 plus x to the power of minus 5 halves. In the denominator we get 3 factorial and we shouldn't forget to multiply this fraction with x to the power of 3. Filling in x is equal to 0 in the numerator, we get the final term x cubed divided by 16. And this procedure can go on forever. However, in most realistic cases, the first couple of terms suffice to approximate the function well enough. In fact, in most of physics, the square root of 1 plus x is approximated by 1 plus x over 2, only the first two terms in the Taylor expansion. If you've made it this far, then well done. If you learned something or want to support me, feel free to give this video a like, or ask any question in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching.